Now let's run the application and see our email service in action. I will add a debugging point just to check when we hit the breakpoint. Let me try to register using an account that has a valid email. Now the very first time when you register, you will see an error message. Let me show that. We hit register. It tries to send an email. It will draft everything. No exception right here. When it tries to send the email, we get an exception. Username and password are not accepted. Now if your credentials are not valid, this is a valid error. But in my case, the credentials are valid. I still get this error message. The reason you are getting this error is because you need to do some configuration. So if I open up my Gmail account and if we click on the icon, manage your Google account, we need to go to security tab and we will scroll down. We have the less secure app access, which is false. We need to turn this on because we want to use our email from the application. Once you turn this on, Let's go back and register a new user with a different email. It hits our breakpoint. Let's continue. And perfect. This time you did not see any error. Let's go to the new email that I registered. And perfect. Right here I get a confirmation to confirm my email. When I click there, it will take me to the account and it displays your email is confirmed. So you can see all the functionality of email is working and also if you examine the ASP.NET users table right there you will see one of the accounts email is confirmed and that's what we just did. So in the identity razor pages we have many more functionalities that are available. If you click on the name here you will notice we have more functionalities with the identity pages like changing email, password, two-factor authentication, personal data, and much more. I haven't gone into those details because that can be a course by itself because you can see there are so many Razor pages that we get with the default identity. But now you have seen how to send emails successfully using your Gmail account. Now that we have seen how to send email with the Gmail SMTP, I want to show you a different way of sending email, which is using SendGrid. SendGrid is a third party tool that is supported to send emails. We will just have to sign in. If you do not have an account, you will have to create an account. Now, before you guys follow along with SendGrid, you should only use SendGrid if you are not using Gmail, Yahoo or Hotmail accounts. You should only use this for domain emails like I have .NET Mastery. Inside the account, first thing that you have to do is inside settings, you will click on sender authentication. Here you will have to verify a single sender. You can see I have verified my domain email which is hello at .NET Mastery .com. If you use Yahoo or Gmail, this will not work. So do not even try if you are not using a domain email. If you just want to see email in action, I showed that using SMTP for Gmail. But if you have a domain email and if you are serious about how to send email with SendGrid, you can watch this video and follow along. So first thing, as I said, you will have to verify a single sender identity using your domain email. After you do that, you will have to create an API key if you do not have one. So I will create an API key for this account. I will call that as Abby with full access. Let's create. You will have to copy this key because once they hide this, it will not be revealed again. Let's hit done button and save that key inside our app settings. Let me remove this debugging point. We will save that in app settings. Let me create a new section of send grid. In there I will have a key of secret key and the value I will paste it right here. So now we have a secret key that we can use to send emails with send grid. How do we use this in our email sender? It is very simple. 
let me comment out this code and we will start with that right here first thing first we need to get the secret key for send grid on this page now i do not like to hard code that in this page now the secret should always be inside app settings one way of retrieving that secret is using dependency injection ctor we will get the object of i configuration i will call this underscore config and here let me create a property string which is the send grid secret so inside the constructor we will populate our secret key using underscore config we have a method there which is get value we need to define here what is the type of the value we expect that is a string we can see that right here now using our configuration we can access our app settings we just need to define what is the section name and in that what is the key name so section name is send grid we can copy that we will paste that here let's go back the key name is secret key we will paste that with a colon what that will do is from our app settings it will go to the send grid section get the value of the secret key and populate that inside the send grid secret then we need to install the NuGet package for send grid so we can say variable client is equal to new send grid client if you press control dot it should display the option to install the send grid package let's find and install that and here we will have to pass our send grid secret then we have variable from is equal to new email address we will add the using statement there and we need to give an email address let me say hello at dot net mastery dot com and we can give this a name which is abby food next we need to create a to which will be new email address that email is inside the parameter and we can give it a name if we want if not that's okay lastly we need to create a variable for message this will be mail helper dot we want to create a single email you can create single email to multiple recipients you can create a single template but we want a basic email from is inside the from variable to is inside to subject we get from the parameters and then we do not have plain text context we have the html content inside the html message simple as that once everything is done we will just return back client dot send email message with the message that we created so that should create our email and send it out using send grid let's try that out as well let me register for a new account here let's hit the register button it will register and sign us in to validate let me open my gmail account and perfect right here you can see we have an email from abby food hello at dot net mastery via send grid so with that we have seen how to send email using send grid again this only worked because i have a domain email if i was using gmail or yahoo there is a very small chance that it could work in any modern application single sign-on is a great benefit so i will show you how to use sign-on using facebook in our existing application dotnet project already has a built-in support for that so you will go to developers.facebook.com and click my apps i already have quite a few apps but i will create a new app for this course we will be using the consumer aspect for facebook login let's select that and hit continue project name i will give that as abby and let's create the app once that app is created we have facebook login here we just need to set that up it will be a web application and we will have to go back and run the application let's get the local host url here and paste it right here 
Next, we will hit continue. It displays some of the steps that you have to do, but we do not need to do anything for that because everything is already done for us. One change that we have to do is we will have to click on the settings button right here. And then you will paste the URL that we copied in the valid OAuth redirect URI. You will just add sign in hyphen Facebook. That is the default route that you will have to write when you are using Facebook. With that, we should save the changes. Then we need to get the app and secret key for this particular app that we generated. So if we go to dashboard here, I believe we'll have to go to settings, basic, and we have the app ID and app secret. Once we have the screen, we will switch back to our application. Let me stop that and we will have to install NuGet package in our web project. We will search for authentication Facebook. We have Microsoft.ASP.NetCore.Authentication.Facebook. Make sure to install the same version that you are working on. And once we do that, we just need to add some configuration inside the program.cs right here. The configuration that we have to do is inside the builder.services. So we will say builder.services.add authentication. Now that has helper methods. So the authentication that we want to add here is Facebook. Since we add the NuGet package, it will already be visible right here. So we can say options goes to, and we have two options that we need to configure. One is the app ID and the next one is the app secret. You know where to get these two values from. Let me go back. We have the app ID. We will copy that, paste it here. Next, we have the app secret. Let me copy this and paste it right here. And you will not believe, but that's all that you have to do. Let me run the application and show you the magic. We will log out here and let's hit the register button. You can see in register, now we have the Facebook that is available by default. That's great, right? Let's see what happens if we hit Facebook. Of course, we need to do some permissions that we have to approve on Facebook. It's just displaying us the warning. So let's ignore that and hit the continue button. It will redirect us back to the local host and great, you can see it displays you have successfully authenticated with Facebook. Please enter an email address for this site below and click the register button. Now as soon as you hit the register button, at this time the account will be created. But when the account is created, we do not have the custom properties like name and phone number. So let me add those in the next video.